Hey everybody, welcome back to GR Research where again we are checking out the new little desktop mini that uh, I just threw a video out on last week. As you guys know, the mini is not only a new desktop speaker, but it's something I'm throwing out there, as I said, as a loss leader. It's, it's no money. It's the best way to get started in DIY. It's the, one of the easiest kits I've ever designed. And we've done everything we can to try to make this as easy as possible for everybody. And as you can see, one next to me here, we've got one mocked up in a finished cabinet. For those of you guys who you want to get into DIY, but you just don't want to put your own cabinets together, you can order them finished in a nice veneer. You can order them finished unveneered. Uh, or you can just get the flat pack, which is, of course, the cheapest way to get it with no frills, flat pack, and the kit for $199. Now, over here, just out of frame, is one of the pair that I put together the other day when you saw the video on Duratexing. I showed you guys how to do some Duratexing, and I Duratexed a couple of sides on this and showed you the old plastic bag technique so that you could see how to make this cool texture with the Duratex. All I did was coat this thing with two coats of Duratex and then whipped out some blue spray paint and sprayed it blue and one coat of clear and the Duratex hides all the all the seams in these things so it looks like a solid block of textured blue. It's so simple anyone can do it. So I wanted you guys to see there are inexpensive easy to do alternatives and we dropped the drivers into these already and it looks really cool in the blue. So. We are now gonna go shoot another video. We're gonna look at the actual assembly of this stuff. And I'm gonna let you guys watch me put a crossover together, wire everything up, mount it in the speaker, everything. This is gonna be a really easy one for you guys to do. It's only gonna take me a few minutes to put a crossover together and we're gonna let you guys watch a little bit of a close up as I put it together. So it should be really easy. So let's head over to the workbench. Let's put a crossover together. Here we are over here at the workbench and we're gonna put some crossovers together. I've already kind of mocked one of them up here just to give myself a little bit better layout so you guys didn't have to watch me figure out how to do a layout on this thing. Um, and it's a very simple network. This is something I never do. I never show the network. Typically the network is our own intellectual property and I don't give it away for free. Uh, there's companies out there that would love to see what we're doing and there's there's always that guy out there that wants to just buy the drivers and throw something together with a bunch of parts and pieces that he's got laying around and then they never really get to enjoy what we really designed. So I never give that out. It's for the private use of each customer and not for commercial use. In this case though, things are a little different. It's a bit of a lost leader. I'm not making money on this thing. And I am going to show everyone how to put this thing together and the values used because this is like one of the simplest crossovers anybody could ever design for anything. And fortunately, the drivers just don't need a lot of help. So they're not needing a complex crossover. So this one's really super simple. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just twisting together the parts in the tweeter circuit. This little 6.8 microfarad cap is getting bypassed by this 0.1 sonic cap. And we've talked about that before how the 0.1 sonic cap is basically discharging the stored energy in the bigger cap. So it's faster and cleaner and gives you better detail and resolution. Um, and it does it really cheaply. It's like we're not having to buy a super expensive cap. It's kind of a cheat. As you guys can see, I just twisted this resistor together with these two caps right there. And when we're doing something in a line like that, we're, we're running something in a straight line. I typically twist those things together so that they're in a straight line and then I'll solder it together. And then on the inductor, which is going across back to ground, we've got a connection point here where we're gonna connect wire. And anytime we have a connection point where we're gonna connect wire, what I'll do is twist it together differently so it's got a little bit of a pigtail sticking up so that we've got something to connect the wire to and solder the wire to. So basically, we've made that whole tweeter circuit while I was just sitting here chatting with you guys. So it's just like when my wife used to help put, put parts together for kits. She would lay out all the parts on the schematic so she would know that she had everything there. 
And I said, hey, honey, if you'll just twist those parts together now, you've built a crossover. She'd say, what? And I'd say, sure. You've built a crossover if you just twist them together. So we just twisted those three parts together. Well, four parts counting the bypass cap. And we've built the tweeter circuit. So the tweeter circuit is going to go on here, just like I've kind of thrown this one together. And this one here's the guide. And we're going to loop this around. And we're going to be sure that our inductors are not facing the same direction. That's the most important thing when we build a crossover. We don't want the inductors both flat next to each other. We want them to where this little guy here, if it were to roll, it were to roll into or away from the larger inductor. So that way the fields don't interact with each other. So next we're going to, we're going to twist these two together. That's the first little resistor here and this inductor, we're twisting those together to make a common input. So this is our input to the whole thing. And you can twist it together by hand if you need to get you a little, I like to keep this little duck build pliers here and twist these things together so that I've got a connection point so that we can connect the input wire to this point. Hopefully I'm not in you guys way too much. You can see it. That is our input point right there. And then we're going to have the output, which is going to be right here on this side. And you guys can move this stuff around and twist it around and do anything you want with it uh, until you figure out exactly how you want it positioned. And then you can solder it. And on this one, we've got a resistor and shunt with this capacitor, and you can do it in any order. You don't have to do resistor and then capacitor, or the capacitor and then resistor. Uh, in this case, I'm hooking the resistor, which is the opposite of the way it is in the diagram here. I'm hooking the resistor straight up to the coil on the output to give myself a little more room, because this little resistor here is kind of small. And I'm going to twist it around there to where it makes contact right there, as you can see, just like that one. And I'm just going to twist those together. And that's going to be the output to the woofer circuit. So the, the connection really is that we're twisting it together. That's, that's the connection. The solder is basically just holding the connection together. So the connection really isn't the solder. The connection is that it's point to point wired and twisted together. And you have to be careful on your twisting once you get once you get to twisting on this stuff, you don't want to twist on it so hard that you twist the ends of them off and then you break it and then you have to contact me and say, hey, I twisted the ends off of this capacitor because you just kept twisting and kept twisting until it pulled it out. And that does happen and I do have to wind up mailing you guys another capacitor or another resistor. You don't want to twist it so hard that you get down to the end and you're twisting it off. So. Now you've just watched me assemble one entire crossover, just like that one there. I don't know, we'll just spend a three or four minutes or something. So that's the whole thing. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and solder all of it together so that it doesn't move around. And then we're going to place it squarely on the boards to where we want it. And then I'm going to mark all those spots and then we're going to go drill holes in the board for the zip ties. We're going to zip everything down. Next, it's time to do some soldering. We always want to make sure the soldering tip is clean. We want to get this thing good and hot, which in this case just takes a few seconds for it to warm up. We want to put some solder on the tip. We always want to have some solder on the tip. And I like to start at the very end and just work my way down it a little bit. And we're going to solder those connections together. When I'm doing a resistor and a cap, I like to start with the resistor because the resistor is designed to handle heat. So if you get a little extra heat in there, that's not a problem. Um, same with the cools. If you get a little extra heat built up into the cool, that's no big deal. The thing you have to be careful about usually is the capacitors. You don't want to get a lot into the capacitor. So we'll start over here on the resistor. And we're just soldering across. There's a little excess there, and I'm going to trim those off here in just a minute. As soon as I finish soldering, and if your soldering iron starts to look like 
This one does. You see it's got building up a little bit of flux there that it's burned up. Just brush that stuff off. Brushing it off a little brush here. And then we're just going to keep right on going. Never even pulled my finger off the trigger. We're just keeping it hot. And soldering it right to it. Spin it around there. This is going to be the output to the woofer. Solder that right on. I don't have to do a super solder job on it here because some of the those connections we're going to be soldering some uh, wire to, so we're going to be twisting wire to it and soldering it. There's that connection, just two left. Now you guys think, man, soldering, I don't know how to solder. Solder's hard, hard to solder. No, it's not hard to solder. What you want is a nice hot soldering gun so you can get on and off it quick. That's it, we soldered both networks up. Um, Next, we're going to um, we're going to mark the board and figure out exactly where we're going to do some drilling. And then I'm going to cut. We're going to go to it back in the shop, and I'm going to do some drilling. I don't think I'm going to use this one here. And basically, just twisting everything to where you want it, because once you once you drill it, that's how you're going to mount it. So what I'll do is I'll drill through both boards at the same time, stack them on top of each other. And now they're perfectly identical and just exactly the same. So, I don't want the black one. I am going to start marking where I want zip tie holes. And there's already one right there that I can use for that. I'm going to use just one here. I'm going to wrap it around the outside. On these little coals that are standing up, I usually do two. I'll do kind of one on each side. And on the resistors, I'll just do one on each side. And same with these small capacitors, just do one on each side. And then I'll often look at it and figure out, um, where do I want screws? Now, I'm going to mount this thing in this box. I'm going to slide this thing in there, and I'm going to have to reach in there, and I'm going to have to put some screws in, and I'm going to screw it down to the base. So I want to put a few screw holes in here so that I can get to them. And I want it away from everything, so I usually just put a little X where I want a few of the screws. I'll do some here and here. I'm just picking spots where it's clear and easy to get to. And right there in the middle, there's four screws that'll hold it down nicely. You never want to put one through the middle of the inductor. If you put a screw through the middle, you've created an iron core inductor. And that, that steel screw will start affecting your inductance a little bit. So you don't want to do that. So, now we've got... A board that's marked and we're gonna lay the other one right on top of it like I said and we're gonna go I'm gonna go drill some holes and come back and then we're gonna zip tie all this stuff down all right guys now that we've got holes drilled where we marked all those now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the crossovers on the boards right there and we're gonna start zipping this stuff down so if you're like me I like to hang part of it off the table so I can get to the bottom of it and in this case, we're putting a couple of zip ties on that big inductor. Kind of once we get it zipped down, it'll kind of help hold the rest of the crossover down. And same with this little guy over here. We'll put, put a couple in it. And we just have to feed that zip tie through the center of it there. There we go. One more. Then once we get them in, then I can go in and start pulling on them hard and tightening it up. Hmm. Now that's a stubborn one. All right. Not too stubborn. And then we'll go in and cut all of those off afterward with the... Um, with the little resistors, I usually just go with a small one. A little small zip tie. So I usually make the holes a little smaller on the board for the ones for the resistors. There's that one right there. This also gives a little bit of a standoff on the bottom side of the board. So we've got a little something that it can sit on when we start tightening this thing down and it's not just wood on wood down there on the bottom of the cabinet. We 
we've got something that's a little bit of a buffer. Kind of help with vibration a little bit. But it also gets it right on it, so we're, we're adding mass to the bottom of it, to the bottom panel, by all this weight we're knocking on it here with the, with the crossover. And that will help with the resonance control of that panel. All right. Now it's just a matter of cinching them all down. I usually go with something, a little pair of needle nose or something. Give them a good squeeze. And we've got one crossover fully zipped down. There's a built crossover. Now I'm going to go and cut all these off and I'll make the other one match. And then we'll come back and watch as I connect all the wiring to this thing. And we'll watch a close up. Hopefully, you guys can see how I wire it up. And you'll be able to go through this thing step by step, just like I did. Put yours together just as easily. All right, everybody. Now we've got both crossovers assembled. And I finished zipping the other one down, tightened it up, cut the zip ties off. This was a really easy one to do. There was three parts in the tweeter circuit, three parts in the woofer circuit. If you follow along, watch what I just did, how I twisted it together, look at the schematic. It's an easy one to do. This is the perfect starter DIY project for you. So next, uh, in the next video, we are going to go over and wire this stuff up. You're going to get to watch how I wire this stuff up, beginning to end, from the tube connectors or binding posts all the way to the drivers, and it's going to be super easy. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. If you would, please hit that subscribe button. If you haven't, if you have comments, if you have questions about this one, please post them in the comments section down below. It may be a little easier for us to respond if they're here on this video. We're inundated with emails right now. I'm getting over a hundred a day that I'm trying to answer. And there's, there's multiples of us here now. We're trying to get through the email. So keep the email short if you need to email me. And we will try to respond. If we don't respond right away, hang in there. We're going through a lot of them. So tune in for the next video as we do more with the desktop mini.